What's up, fellas? Today, I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite workouts. I'm really excited to share this with you. This is a 300 rep workout. It's a lot of fun. It'll get you uncomfortably jacked, really fit, and you'll look ridiculously cool while you do it. Now, quick tidbit. Funnily enough, I actually hurt my bicep pretty badly a couple months ago. Really bad tendonitis when I got back from the Arnold. And this workout helped it get a lot better really quickly for me. The meat of this workout, as you can see, is going to be a giant set of 100 pull-ups, 100 dips, and 100 leg raises, and I just do it until I'm done. And the rules are simple. Just don't freaking quit. Today, we're also going to be doing some incline bench work before that massive giant set, and then some arm blasting work after. This is probably my favorite upper body workout, and in general, I've been really excited to do this particular training just because mostly I suck at incline, so the gains on it have been pretty nice since it's a weak point of mine. And I also really just love doing conditioning workouts and calisthenics exercises. Speaking of that, I was just talking to my buddy Sam Sheether about exactly what I just mentioned to you. Getting pumped over small changes in your program. That stuff pumps me up big time, bro. It's like I transform into King Ronnie Coleman. You know that freaking meme where he's crushing the, the freaking barbecue microwave chicken and french fries? That's what I turn into. Holy crap. I'm getting so pissed and fired up just thinking about it, bro. But here's the truth, man. At the end of the day, remember that this is a hobby. Gains are going to slow down. Exercises are going to be the same. Progress is definitely something you could observe over a long time, even when you're advanced. But that gravy train ain't going to be moving at crackhead speed the entire time, man. Slow gravy is better than no gravy, though, and that gravy train is going to keep rolling. Anyways, fellas, gravy trains aside, I used to do a version of this workout you're seeing here a lot when I was a young lad, about 18 years old to be exact, if I remember correctly. So the only difference is, is that instead of the incline bench and the arm stuff, I had run a few miles before and after. That's pretty much the only difference. And I was a lot lighter, so <laughs> it was a lot easier as well. And then on Mondays and Fridays, I'd go to the gym with one of my boys and we'd bench and then we'd raid some freaking restaurant and crush food. It's actually exactly how I got to a 315 bench the first time I did it. How I'm doing it now, though, like I said, is a little bit different. I opened up with the incline camber bar bench press instead of the running. The incline camber bar bench press is an interesting movement for me because it has freaking eternal range of motion. First and foremost, bro, incline bench in general is just going to have a lot more range of motion than flat bench. You can try it, see it for yourself. Add on top of that my longer arms and that freaking four inch divot in that bar, adding even more range of motion. And you're left with a really comically large distance. I have to move the bar and thus I get a comically large stretch on the shoulders, chest, and triceps. I'm putting so much emphasis on my form here and just doing incline bench in general because recently I've been hitting some very good flat barbell bench metrics in my volume sets and in my as many reps as possible sets. But I have some glaring weaknesses in my overhead and incline pressing that I've known were there for a long time that I really want to correct before I push any deeper into hitting truly heavy bench work. So I don't move much beyond 315 to 330 for reps on bench right now. For reference, I am incline pressing on those previous clips 205 on the camber bar with really controlled form. But to put it in perspective, I can rep 315 for eight reps on the flat bench on a good day. I've done five by five recently with 320 pounds currently. So the difference in loading is huge. So there's a pretty big area of opportunity there. I'm going to talk about these dips and pull-ups in a second, because honestly, before I started doing them again this way, I thought dips freaking sucked for me for the longest time, to be honest with you. But in short, one thing I'll leave you with is, is that incline and overhead press are low hanging fruits for me. And as an advanced lifter with an already extremely developed physique, attacking those lowest hanging fruits are important for keeping your rate of progress as fast as it possibly can be. The giant set work that comes after the incline bench, though, is really effective at building work capacity. And on top of that, all of it is pretty relevant work, to be honest with you, bro. I'm over 200 pounds, so the pull-ups and dips are like, so say if I was 160 pounds, It'd be like adding a 45 pound plus plate attached to it. You know what I mean? Attached to the dip belt. So look me in my eyes and tell me that that's junk volume. 
If you're 160 pounds doing 100 reps with 45 added on pull-ups, that's not junk volume. Of course it's not. I also mostly get a lot of good blood flow to my elbow, which is where it helped my bicep tendon recover really nicely. Fellas, listen, I horsed the heavy dumbbells when I got home from the Arnold without warming up. I was rushing because I just needed to be somewhere, but I should have just did less sets and just warmed up properly. Now, thankfully, I can work around this and still train pretty normally, though. And this workout definitely helped a lot in that regard, along with some periodic band curls and things like that. Now, speaking of the work that we're doing in the giant set more specifically, I really buy into for calisthenics exercises in particular. I don't know how else to describe it, but you just flex into the eccentric and flex into the concentric. It's hard to describe, bro, but it's it's getting more out of less weight, but it's more than that. It's really connecting with the movement. And I, I say that, let me preface this because it may sound like a cope for not moving heavy weights. I've done over 200 pounds on the weighted dip for reps at my current body weight. I've done four plate weighted pull-ups at my current body weight. I've done freaking four plates on the squat for freaking many, many reps. I just feel like that if I keep the weight more moderate, at, you know, in terms of total load compared to my one rep max on calisthenics exercises, I get so much more out of them because I can focus on them more. Listen, even if I on camera do the same speed of eccentric, the level of control that I have where I'm flexing into my muscles on a body weight dip versus on a weighted dip is just orders of magnitude different. And I don't feel them otherwise unless I really do them with body weight or very, very little weight added. And same with the pull-ups, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't able to do barbell rows for the longest time because of my bicep until just recently. I'll throw up a clip of my rows right here, actually. My best set for 15 most recently is 260 pounds. And I'm literally at the exact same strength level just because of all the pull-ups that I've been doing. That's also to speak to when you build your base of performance and muscle using basic exercises like this, it's really easy for everything to have carryover to one another, or at least easier than it otherwise would be if you were doing a lot of machines. Because each machine, even if it's you know well-designed and it feels good, it may be different from a similar machine in the way that it's built. So then the stimulus that you get from it is different. One machine's 200 might be another machine's 400, which may be another machine's 100. It's just a lot of unnecessary variables you have to manage when you do Jimmy Bookworm shit versus real bread and butter stuff, in my opinion. That's my opinion, at least. Alrighty, that's the 300 rep workout done and dusted. I may think about something else that I may leave in a comment that I want to mention about it. One last thing I'm going to leave you with, though, is, is that when we move on to the arm work, keep in mind that our arms already really got works to, to hell and back with those dips and those pull-ups. The problem with compound movements in terms of growing like the biceps or the triceps with bench press and pulls and building the back in the case of the deadlift isn't that these exercises don't hamburger fry those muscles. They do. Fellas, look. My back gets cooked when I do RDLs. I did 455 for 12 reps on the RDL the other day, beltless. My back, entire back, lats, traps, upper back, mid back was cooked for days, right? The problem is, is that I can't do enough of that exercise to get all the back growth that I can do in a week. Same thing with bench press and pulls. But to say that those dips and pull-ups didn't do anything for my arms at all is nonsense. It's bonkers to say that. Compound movement talk aside, I have now shown reverse curls and here I'm doing just normal, regular old alternating barbell or dumbbell curls rather for 60 pounds. My best right now is 10 reps. And on this particular day that I'm showing right here, I'm matching that personal best, but I did it in seven or less seconds. So those are the type of things that you want to look to in terms of improvement. Sometimes it's not even adding reps, it's doing the same amount of reps quicker and with better form than you did last time. Of the two on this particular day, I think I prefer the reverse curls just because, I don't know, I just feel like I want better forearms and the reverse curls work the forearms a little bit more. But, you know, I've done both on this day and I enjoy both. In terms of tricep exercises, again, here I have two plates on the JM Press Smith machine. So it's really like 205 or something like that. I think the bar is 
25 pounds. My math might be wrong on that one, but you know, just call it two plates. I've tried this and press downs. I got to say that although JM press really feels good and here particularly I'm doing a really roidy drop set. So I'll do like a heavy set and then I'll strip some weight off, do some more reps, so on and so forth until I get to a plate. That feels really good, but sometimes my focus isn't there for the the heavier work after that bloodbath 300 rep giant set. And the press downs are just easier for me to just ooga booga push the weight, if that makes sense. But both have worked again, but if I had to pick one, I probably would go with the the press downs. But in general, I've really been liking the JM press. I've been doing that on multiple training days and I'm connecting with it really well. Just started doing it a couple weeks ago. I got some posing with the freaking sword here. I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Nearly perfect game, one of the best games I've ever played. And I had a buster sword, so I couldn't uh, resist doing that. But a couple considerations with the form that I want to talk about. I talked about the calisthenics exercises and just my opinion on it. In terms of the reverse curls, I've tried them thumb around the bar and thumbless. And a lot of folks will tell you that they connect better with them when they're thumbless. That's actually a really popular opinion. And I just have to say that I, for me, disagree with that because I connect with the movement a lot better when I have my thumb wrapped around and when I curl the bar to like either my nose or my forehead. I actually got that tidbit from a, a natural pro. I think he's a champion bodybuilder, Brian DaCosta. I follow him on freaking Instagram and he was doing his reverse curls that way and that's kind of the justification that he had. Now, I'm no bodybuilder, despite me putting pissed off bodybuilder in freaking titles, bro. That's just because it's a hilarious thing to put in a freaking title. I'm not going to put in pissed off rec recreational lifter in the freaking title, man. You only got 70 characters before it gives you the dot, 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 and the whole title doesn't show without you doing the click more thing. So I say that to say that I want to be physically large and healthy because that's what my father presented to me, and that's what I saw when I grew up. And that's what I want my children to see growing up as well, to be a good role model in, the, in that regard in terms of the physical health. But because I'm interested in being physically large and I train similarly to bodybuilders in terms of wanting to get bigger, I look to what guys like Brian do to what Alberto Nunez do to Jeff Alberts and to see how similar or different my approach is compared to theirs. I'm not trying to copy off of them. But if I'm just doing something that they say is like totally unnecessary or, so, or, or there's something that they do that they say is really effective, I'm just going to try it out. Does that make sense? Now, the tricky part with that is, and we're getting more into like meta talk now, but I've also gotten advice from really competent people that just didn't apply the best to me. And I just don't do it anymore. There's one last thing I'm going to leave y'all with regarding this particular point. A good friend of mine, Faz Lifts, has a YouTube channel. He's shown support since the beginning of my channel, always gives me great advice. We see eye to eye on not only lifting, but a lot of real life shit as well. Former teacher, multi-decorated freaking athlete, many, many years of experience with lifting. Just a really overall solid guy and a solid source of information. And he says a lot of things that are extremely insightful, but he left a community post saying essentially that we as content creators are not part of a collective inherently. So me, for example, I joke around a lot and I say to my buddy Sam, like, look, man, I'm part of the Belgian blues and uh, uh, Kirsten is the captain of the Belgian blues. That's Sam's wife. And I'm just like, man, I, I only do this if Captain Curse says it's OK. But I like to joke around and say that. But listen, man, if I have an opinion and someone else whom you know to have expertise has an opinion that's different, it's not my responsibility to present my information in a way that is congruent with their opinion. It's up to you to say, hey, I'm being presented with two pieces of information that seem pretty reasonable. I'm going to parse out the one that seems like the best fit for me, see how it works. And if it doesn't work out, I'll try out the other thing or try out something else or maybe try something that I come up with myself. That's all she wrote, though, fellas. Rants aside, that has been my most fun training session. If you want to try it out, start a little bit lower, but I'm going to end this with some victory posing from Final Fantasy VII. Watch these videos now that you've watched this one. Have a good one.